Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Uncanny J-Man. We are back with another, and I guess actually the final for Moon Knight discussion video, season finale of Moon Knight. Uh, definitely spoilers ahead. So be careful. If you haven't watched the entire season, go watch it. The, if you haven't watched any episode, go watch the entire season before watching this. If you haven't seen the last episode, watch that last episode and come back. We are your hosts. I'm Jade. I am Josh. And let's get into some discussion. There's a lot to talk about. This was oh, yeah. 42 minutes of pure content nonstop, no filler. Yes, definitely. They got they they packed a lot into this final episode and somehow made it their shortest one. Yeah. I don't know how they managed to do that. I know we ended the last one thinking, how are they possibly gonna wrap like wrap everything up and answer all the questions in that amount of time? And they did it. Yes, they did. They definitely so, did. That does lead me into my first point that I wanted to talk about, which kind of goes directly into this, everything happened really fast. So is this, for me, this was the lowest point, was like the, one of the very first things in the movie, or movie, the show. Um, <laughs> felt like a movie. It felt like a movie. <laughs> um, this is probably the lowest point for me in this episode, was getting Steven back from the sands. It felt like a not even an issue. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I got flashbacks to Frozen of like. Well, very much so. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the phrase that Olaf says something about like an act of true love thaws a frozen heart. And it was just like the lack, act of true love between Mark and his other identity. And it's <laughs> like all of a sudden they're, they're back. Yeah. That, that did happen very quickly. Um, it was, it was a nice moment. And I think that uh, watching Steven frozen like that and being in a position we've seen before, because Crawley, the, um, the, the statue artist at the beginning, was in that position most of the time. And Steven was in that position. We saw that link there. But not only that, but in the time that it took for Mark to go to the field of reeds and then come back, the level of sand had risen. So mm. Mark was on top of the sand completely when he froze. When Mark got back, the sand was up to his elbow. So it did show some things were changing. But yeah, I definitely agree. That moved very quickly. Uh, but what was nice was it showed Mark actually saying he needs Steven. Whereas yes. the, he didn't really, I mean, kind of didn't, I mean, he never admitted that. He always said, Steven, I'll just let you have the body once this is all done. But he never really said, I need you to Steven. Right. And so that was cool. It kind of showed more of like the, hearts being full kind of thing even though it's handing the heart off and getting them back but that, yeah. that was a good start i mean they had to go pretty quickly through that in order to get to everything else they did so i was happy with it uh yeah <laughs> that was a nice moment yeah and everything went by so quickly it was what's the, the next thing on your list well the very first thing on my list which is oh. kind of going to the end of the episode but uh, it's something that I, I want to make sure that I say. I want to give credit where credit is due. You called it on Jake. Uh -oh. I went back and watched some of our previous discussions. And first off, I didn't realize how many times I predicted that Jake was going to show up at the very start of the next episode. Apparently, I thought every episode was going to be the Jake episode. But you were not that way. In the discussion for episode one, you guessed that Jake wouldn't show up until the very end. Then when we discussed episode two, you doubled down and you predicted that it would be an end credit scene setting yep. up the next season. I'm not sure if a Jake could really show up until maybe like an after credit scene or something to like start mm -hmm. leading into like, oh, this might matter in the next season. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I thought, oh, he's going to sit up for the field of reads or, oh, he's going to pop up from the unconscious body that they left there. Uh, no, no, he, he was waiting for the right moment. The right moment was exactly when you thought it was going to be. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting, I mean, talking about that real fast, because part of that end credits was about the, the deal and be having Moon Knight. We, we had Moon Knight again, a lot of Moon Knight, like the actual costumed yeah. Moon Knight in this final episode. Lots of fighting. I know it's a lot of things that like fans have been, it's a Moon Knight without Moon Knight or... Personally, 
Mark, Steven, they're Moon Knight too. It's not like we watch a Captain yeah. America and be like, he's not in costume. He's not Captain America. No, it's That's fair. It's there. There was no costume for two full episodes, basically. <laughs> but they made up for it in this one. Lots of fighting, uh, cool flipping back and forth for different scenes to like. Someone's grabbing onto a cape and they just quickly flipped the no cape version and then flip back. And like, it was, it was really cool how they did that. Yeah. Yeah. And both of them were very involved. It was no longer Mark's Moon Knight is the fighter and Steven's Mr. Knight is the jokester. No, they right. were both in it. They were a team now. And that was very evident in their fighting styles. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So, what'd you think of? This one I wanted to make sure to talk about. Go for so it. we saw in the last episode a whole bunch of souls go to the sand. Yeah. It almost like does a rewind. And we see a bunch of souls start going down, which was all the mercenaries going down all at the same time. Once Arthur Harrow had that like super powered axe staff thing. Yeah. And got the ability to do a lot more because... Now Emmett was was free and he was super. Or who was it? Well, he wasn't. He wasn't free Not yet. Not free but he was yet. With Harrow. Yeah. It seemed like it seemed like getting the Ushapti powered up his staff. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So that was we actually got to see what that was from, and then we got to see Emmett in its full glory. Oh, looked so good. <laughs> like they the way they've been doing. Um, uh, Kanshu. Kanshu. The way they've been doing Kanshu through this whole season, the animation on him was amazing. They made this weird looking creature from the comics look so real, despite <laughs> the fact that that character cannot look real. And they proved to, to me, they proved in episode six that this was not a fluke. And the way that they did Amet, the way that she looked, it they, it, it could it would have been so easy for them to make Amit look like a comic book character, but they didn't. It looked like it had some of the Egyptian wrappings on it. It had that head, but it it still had that Egyptian style dress. It was not an animal. It was not a, a talking animal. It was an Egyptian god, and I think they did a great job displaying that. Agreed. And also, I really like that they make these. The gods, they're, they're beings, they're real. Like, they try to make them more real. Like, they have real opinions and feelings. Mm -hmm. Just like Kanshu was like, I made a mistake with Arthur Harrow. I needed a certain kind of person. You know, like, I'm trying to do this. Although, maybe did, maybe didn't, now that he's working with, yeah. with Jake. But, um... He seems a little more Harrow. Than yeah. Too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, we see Emmett do the same thing, where Emmett's like, I don't want someone perfectly balanced. The last person I had that was perfectly balanced 2,000 years ago was not a good fit. They, they didn't do what I needed to. I need someone who's not balanced. Yeah, which I feel like Ahmet should have thought about that a little more because it just seems really weird that like Ahmet's entire thing is to consume everyone who's unbalanced and leave the world to those who are balanced. But if Amit looks at Harrow's timeline and says, okay, you're going to be doing terrible things in service to me, doesn't that show, Amit, that your scales would be unbalanced if Harrow doing things for you, doing the things that you're asking him to do, would cause his scales to be unbalanced? It kind of reflects on your own actions there. So I just thought that was very interesting that I feel like Amit didn't learn. Like, it's part of her nature as a god that's just how the how that god functions but i feel like there could have been a learning opportunity if amit was willing to learn from that whole situation really think it through yeah but instead just gets sealed away in a body yeah. um, which i've got we'll talk about that a little bit later because i've got a, a point i want to bring up about the after credit scene um that i want to talk a little bit more in depth later about that but we'll get to it um so we have seen now some, some interesting play that I want to point out because we've seen only a few gods themselves, Egyptian gods themselves. We've seen Kanshu, yeah. then we saw Tawaret, then we saw Amet. So of, like, we've seen those three, and they're very different, all three of them. 
yeah we we now we get to see amit grow to be a, a kaiju giant monster yeah. fight Kanshu as a giant monster like a hitting and smacking into the the pyramids and mm-hmm. in the background though like it's, it was always just yeah. like look like a backdrop <laughs> Like, no matter where yeah. you look, they're in the background. Yeah, it reminded me of playing some like old video games. Yep. Where like you're in the foreground of a 2D scroller, and in the background, these big monsters are fighting, and you're like, huh. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent felt that way when when you see Harrow knock down Moon Knight, and in the background at the same time, Ahmet knocks down Konshu. You're like, yeah, I've seen this type of animation before. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's talk about the newest superhero on the block. Sure. That was an unexpected surprise. Yeah. And I loved it. Me too. Yes. We get to see Layla get a costume and become the avatar of Tawaret, which I'm glad she said no to Kanshu. Yeah. But she also said no to Tawaret, which I think is a very important thing to point out. But she said no to Tawaret because Tawaret was like, oh yeah, no, like be my avatar. You're I've heard you're great. But she knew what being an avatar was like for other people. And she was like, no, Kanshu, definitely not. But then once yeah. figured out that you have to have more avatars to get the job done, then she was like, all right, well, I'm definitely going with Tower right after <laughs> over anyone else. So I agree. I love the way that Layla thought through the whole thing, being offered by Tarot and saying, nope, I've seen the impact of being an avatar. I'm not going to be an avatar. And then Kanshu steps forward and, oh, I'm offering you this great thing. And she's like, ah, nope, ah, I'm out. Just, nope, nope. Back it up there, Kanshu. But yeah, and so she had to think through it and realize, okay, I said no to Tarouette and she immediately respected it. I said no to Kanshu and he tried to make it out like he was doing me this giant favor. So it was, it was pretty clear who her choice should have been and she made that choice. So major credit, and that, that suit looked awesome. The suit looked with the bladed awesome. wings. Yeah. Like, oh man, a plus on the costume department. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we get to see a lot more of Layla Tawaret. What I don't know what what yeah. her costume form is going to be called. So I don't think we heard anything besides thought- you're an Egyptian hero, and she's like, I am. So there yeah. was no name I saw associated with it. I didn't either. I saw someone on Twitter, I think, uh, referred to her as the Scarlet Scarab, which I guess is from the comics, but I don't know anything about who that is or what that is. I didn't have a chance to look it up. Okay. I'm not so familiar with that. That's one I don't know anything about. Yeah. Um, but, but still. Whether, whether it is that or it's a completely new character, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'll be curious too, because part of it was Layla specified temporary avatar and tower right was like yeah sure sounds great but then she saves the little girl and the little girl says are you an egyptian hero and layla thinks about it and says yes i almost feel like that was in there to be a moment for layla to realize this is okay this relationship can work mm. so I, I think she's going to hold on to it i think that temporary is going to go away and i think she's going to hold on to that I hope so. I also loved, I loved how uh, the, the goddess Tarouette of women and children, and then in this fight, women and children go into a van, and so she goes and, he, and she saves them. Yeah. She's living up to her goddess already. <laughs> yeah, love it. It, it can't, can't get enough. The having, it, having her in the show, she was, did awesome. And the ability, we've been praising Oscar Isaacs for being able to like jump between personalities, and her going from yeah. not having to jump at all to flash, 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 like go yeah. real fast between personalities. I think she did an excellent job. Yeah, um, I agree. So I'm, I'm excited to see more. Yeah. This show is chock full of people who just got it right. Just in every level. Yes. In production in acting just everywhere. It just seems like they were nailing it. Hope fingers crossed for a season two. Cause I definitely oh. think they deserved it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also curious, so while we're on the topic of Layla, what do you think happened to her at the end? I, I know I'm jumping to the end again, but I feel like it's on the topic. She just kind of disappeared at the end, and all of a sudden Mark and Steven were on their own, and 
Did they just so, leave her in the pyramid? That's what I'm thinking is that she's still in Egypt. Um, because I originally I thought we were gonna see Mark or Stephen or whoever get up from bed and then she was gonna get up. The framing looked like that to me. Like she was gonna yeah. get up right behind him, but never did. And so then yeah. I was thinking, okay, so she's not with him. The only reason she wouldn't be with him is if she's off doing something else. Mm -hmm. Um and the only thing I could think of is her being an Egyptian hero and her staying in Egypt. And then season two is going to be going back to Egypt at some point, I imagine, as the Egyptian gods. So that's how I think she'll probably be in it still. That's my hope. Where is she? So another thing I'd like to kind of bring up that I have a question on your opinion. Yeah. I'm wondering, do you think everyone can see giant Ahmet and giant Khonshu and the souls going up to, to Ahmet's mouth? That's a good question. I didn't really think about that. Um, definitely know that they see the fighting in the streets. Mm -hmm. The souls leaving the bodies. I'm not, I yeah. feel like they probably don't see the gods. Okay. Because I feel like they don't see the souls. But they do see the gods. I was unsure. I think I'm leaning, leaning towards them not seeing the gods either. Okay. So... As far as the souls... All right, I agree with you. Yeah. And I have it a reason why like, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so for the souls, I feel like we saw Harrow judging people early on, and we saw them shrivel up into nothing. Like their bodies became just empty husks. But then later on, we saw Harrow judging people, and we could see the souls, but that did, we didn't get to see that as an audience until after we knew what was happening was their, their souls were being sent down. So I feel like that was being shown to us the audience at that point, but I still, I would still say that that's the, it's still the same thing that was happening early on where Harrow was judging people, their souls were leaving, but that was visible to us, visible to him maybe, but not visible to the audience. I feel like they're probably just seeing the shriveling that we saw earlier. Yeah, and I, I came to this just quickly in my head when after you asked the question, I came to the same conclusion because of the same thing. We've seen him judge. Yeah, we've seen him yeah. judge and people shrivel. Mm -hmm. But yeah. no souls, we didn't see the souls coming out, but the souls would be coming out every time anyway. Um, right. So yeah, I, I would agree. I would say that they could not see the souls or the gods, but they saw, of course, the fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like the gods can choose when they're seen and when they're not. Um, I mean, at the end, when Layla released Khonshu, she could see Khonshu because he wanted to address her. Then Khonshu pops out to stop Ahmet, and it seemed like Harrow, at the very least, could see Khonshu. And the rest of them were all looking in his direction, so I am assuming he just decided this was the time I want to reveal myself. So I feel like he was letting himself be seen there because he, he had a message. But yeah, I would assume that they would choose to be big and fight each other in secret. Um, so I, that's my leaning as well. Who knows? Maybe one of the next MCU projects will see a news article on a TV reel, like somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that'll prove us <laughs> right or wrong. They love to do that. So yeah. Giant crocodile fights giant dead bird in Egypt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say that. This episode moved really fast. There was a lot of fighting. Not much happened during the fighting for the most part. Until, and some people may not like this. I'll admit, I don't, I think that some people won't like this because it's like, this is the finale, the big fight is like mm. intense, it's going crazy, and then blackout. Yeah. And you come back and all the fighting's done and you've won. Like yeah. that may rub some people the wrong way where it's like, well, we just missed out on like the climactic fight ending and it's just yeah. over. Khan <laughs> Shu's on top of Amit winning. We have Harrow knocked out. Like all the other people all around are all dead or, or knocked out. Mm -hmm. Like we missed the, 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 I mean, granted, we just got 10 minutes straight of fighting. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, I can see some people not liking that they did that. But if, so necessary because I kept on teasing, kept on teasing about Jake and how violent he is. Yep. And 
it shows. Although I have a theory that I'm not going to say right now, but okay. I have a, after watching the whole series, I want to watch the whole series one more time, but I have oh, an wow. idea for a theory video that I'll, I'll probably have come out sometime in the next month. So I'll just, everyone can look out for that. It's going to be a Moon Knight theory about Jake even further than we've done already and further than we're going to discuss here. Okay. Because I was going to ask you a question about Jake of something that I'm trying to figure out. Go ahead. Ask the question. I'm going to ask the question. If this is your theory video, though, feel free to say, just say stay tuned or something. What can Jake do? Because it seems like, I mean, like Mark was beaten. Stephen was beaten. Harold had them pinned and was like sapping their energy or something. What could Jake possibly have the ability to do that can turn that around and suddenly be just absolutely everyone? So quickly that Layla just all of a sudden is putting her, her shield down and is like, what was that? Like, what did you do? Or something like that. Like, she seemed completely stunned by just how quickly he just all of a sudden had everyone beaten. So part of my theory will go into that it'll be like it'll be a a adjacent theory adjacent so definitely stay tuned what i will say is that um we have seen just from the after credits that jake is a lot more brutal and that mark and steven are a lot more reserved especially steven so one element that does not go into any of the stuff that i want to talk about in my theory is um i think that jake is just willing to do anything and everything. There's nothing holding him back to destroying people left and right. Um, yeah. So I think that is a benefit just innately for him. Mm-hmm. The, everything else that I'm thinking goes into my the theory video about Jake. All right. You heard it, heard it here first. Stay tuned. I'm excited. You, about, I'm, really to excited. On this. I'm really excited <laughs> about this one. It's, it's bigger than I haven't seen. I like every now and then I watch some other people like, talk about it go to forums things like that i have not seen anyone discuss what i'm about to talk about and i am thoroughly convinced that i am 100 percent true on what i'm about to say what i'm all saying it all right excited for it i am too now thank you (laughs) (laughs) but i'm going to circumnavigate the the theory thing that i'm talking about um (laughs) let's talk about jake after credits. Well, let's talk about the yes. after credits completely. So we see Harrow in the psych ward, but the psych ward wasn't real. It was the holding place after death for Mark and Steven. But is it real this time? I think this one, one this one was real. Okay. Because it's the exact same place, I thought. It looked similar, but when they were le- they they were able to leave and it had a name on the door. That's true. Um, it had it had like all the setup of being a real place. So I, I'm thinking that this one was real. That they put him in a real psych ward this time. It would make sense that he is it that it's real because otherwise Jake shooting him and killing him, thus getting rid of Ahmet and Harrow, um, mm-hmm. would not matter if it was a mindscape. Right. It, yeah. It's it wouldn't matter as much maybe, but yeah, I, I would say it's probably real. And then we see Jake, he speaks a different language the, the whole time. Spanish. He doesn't speak English. Spanish. He speaks Pretty Spanish. Sure Spanish. Yeah. Okay. He does not speak English, which we know Jake from the comics as the New York cabbie, yeah. thick New York accent, but he doesn't use that at all. Mm-hmm. So either Oscar Isaacs can't do a New York accent, which that's not going to be true. <laughs> An actor <laughs> like that not doing it, like that can't be true. So it, it must be just a choice. Uh, it's an easy distinction to have him speak Spanish to start off with. Yeah, I and, have heard that he has, uh, that, that he does, he knows Spanish. So, okay. Um, yeah, since he already knows it, it makes sense that he can pull this out and make this character choice. Yeah, that was, I mean, I felt like as soon as I saw the dark gloves on it yeah. and the whistling over, like getting him out of there, I was like, oh, this is going to be Jake. This is going to be Jake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they, they finally revealed it and for a lot of people they'll be like wait what <laughs> for us they've been talking about it this whole time it's like every finally. single discussion <laughs> yes every discussion we mentioned jake yeah and when when the when the regular episode ended i sat back on my seat and i was like man that was absolutely amazing the only thing missing is that they didn't show jake 
Yeah. Watching the credits, I'm just like casually watching the credits to see. And I'm thinking to myself, at the beginning when they did the last time on or previously on part of the beginning, they were very clearly showing Jake parts, like that extra coffin. They spent more time looking at that coffin in the in the previously on for this episode than I feel like they did in the actual episode when it happened. <laughs> so I was like, they set it up. Jake had to appear. I guess that was just for the blackout at the end. And then the end credit scene starts. <laughs> Interesting thing. So we see Kanshu in the, the limousine mm-hmm. and him saying... Yeah, looking sharp, and him saying <laughs> that he didn't really leave them alone. He promised to do it, but he didn't actually go back on his promise in a way. Right. The way that Mark slash Stephen worded the new agreement is to leave Steve, like leave us alone. So and yep, Conchu replies, kind of, "Yeah, I will release you both." Exactly. Yeah. The wording was important. So he released those two, but he still has Jake. He, exactly. he doesn't go back on his word. His word is still true. Yeah. He ended up with just getting the one who's willing to do anything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, once again, I know we've been saying this all the time, props to Oscar Isaac, because I knew it was Jake. And so therefore I knew it was Oscar Isaac. When he turned around, I'm like, is that Oscar Isaac? <laughs> Like he just, his face just looked like scrunched more than his face has to any of the rest of it. He looked more sinister. He did. Yeah. He really did. He looked like he was the villain. And Oscar Isaac has looked like the hero, whether it's Ben, Steven, or Mark. He just looked like two different types of heroes. Yeah. I would love for season two just to be Steven and Mark against Jake somehow. If that was like a big part of that. You're man, getting into like the craziness there. You're getting into like multiple man comic books where he, yeah. the whole man has his, his copies of himself, and one of them is a bad guy in the comic series. Um, <laughs> but that gets, yeah. takes another whole level where you're fighting yourself, but a different version of yourself. You can't like beat yourself, can't like, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. excited for two years from now when <laughs> we get another one, maybe. Yeah, um, we'll see. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? We got a lot of MCU coming out. We certainly so. do. That's the great thing about Marvel is they don't let you sit around for long. Nope. We, we will be back tomorrow with our next episode to talk about uh, Multiverse of Madness. So our break is short-lived here. <laughs> well, we are towards the end of our recording today. So let's get final re- re- thoughts, not just of this episode, but this episode and whole season. How do you feel? It, it, I, th- I felt like it was incredible. Um, it was, yeah, we said at the beginning, they were setting this up to be very different than any of their other properties. They followed through. Not only was it different, it was much darker. We definitely saw that. They didn't even mention any other Marvel property. Like well, the, the tiniest little mentions. Just well, what like did they say? As the spirit plane for the uh, ancestral plane. Oh, that's and- true um yeah. Madripoor but like nothing where it was like no cameos no yeah big so it's like locations yeah. no other heroes um it, it even got to the point which I'm not writing it off but my wife was like was that even our universe did that take place in a in a, in a different part of the multiverse because they never mentioned any of the heroes I don't know whether it is or not but I, I think the fact that they chose to just go in their in, go in their own direction completely, with the focus not even being on the hero, the focus being on the mental state of the hero and just the whole adventure aspect of it, focusing on the adventure and overcoming the personal tribulations. It it was it was great. Um, what, I'm giving this a ten out of ten because to me ten out of ten means it's in the top 10%. And this was easily in the top 10% of, of stuff out there. I, th- I think they just did such an incredible job. I look forward to what, re-watching five out of six of these episodes. <laughs> 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 not, not that number five was bad. It definitely was not bad. No way was it bad. Just but sad. I think I've seen it enough that I know what happens. I might just go one, two, three, four, six <laughs> next time. She'll be like, yeah, I remember number five. 
but yeah, no, I thought it was so good. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'll say I really liked it. Um, I probably wouldn't give it 10 to 10. I'd probably be closer to like an eight and a half out of 10 uh, for me. But I mean, I feel like they did a really good job developing the characters, including like multiple characters of the same person. Um, they did it like, I'm not a huge action for the sake of action kind of person. And this show didn't have a lot of action for the sake of action. Um, it told towards the end, they did some cool stuff with it. Um, it was good storytelling and everything. It's just, I guess I'm, when I compare it against other MCU TV series or the like, it's hard for me to call them TV series when they're never really on TV, they're streaming services, but um, series. So when you look at MCU series, I would still put Loki and WandaVision above it in my book. Okay. And that's why I'd be giving it like an 8.5 out of 10 instead of like a 9 or 10 is because both of those still feel higher to me. I think I'm a gentler grader. I'm thinking to myself, well, they could all be 10 out of 10, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's difficult because I feel like uh, Loki and WandaVision were so incredibly different than this show that I have a hard time comparing them. And I, that's something that like, for me personally, when I'm comparing shows to each other or, or entities to each other, I need time to get to know them. So I will watch something and then I'll let it sit for a little while mm. and then I'll rewatch it and I'll see how it compares. And then I'm willing to put in that ranking. So I am not ready to compare it to those two, but yeah. I thought it yeah, was, it was I will say like, I see this one more as similar to the Netflix MCU shows as far okay. as like the feel and everything still i've said it before i'll say it again like, it really does feel more like those that style just a little bit more mcu like but mm -hmm. even that i i mean i really liked moon knight but there's there's a couple of the netflix shows that a single season compared to this season like jessica jones season one may be my favorite series of any show ever um I did not know that. I I, wow. I love it so much. Like the like with David Tennant's Purple Man, like the way that they do, it, like I just think it's brilliant. And most people don't like it. There's no action like at all, ever. Um, <laughs> but I just think it's just so fascinating and so so good. It's it's up there, if not the top top two or three. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. And there goes all of our viewers now. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I still loved it. thought it was amazing. My scale has changed over time. Before the MCU <laughs> came out, uh, this may have been a 10 out of 10. But yeah. now that my scale has changed, where like upper end is now a new upper end, it's a bigger, harder scale from my, my side. But yeah, loved I did, it. I, it's I think yeah. it's worth a watch. Anyone who likes the MCU at all, of course, should watch the entire series. I don't think it's going to affect anything else. So you do have time. But again, if you're now watching this, you should have already watched it all. So I guess it's too late for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I definitely look forward to watching this again. I feel like it opened up so many questions early on and gave so many answers later on. But I can still think of so many areas that I'm just like, I'm not sure I fully grasped what happened there. That I look forward to looking back and seeing, okay, did I miss something? Is there... I feel like there's still more secrets that I just haven't found in this show. Um, and there's a few things I enjoy more than figuring out, like solving the mysteries behind shows. Definitely. So I definitely look forward to rewatching this whole, this whole thing again. Me too. Well, thank you everyone for joining us throughout this entire series of Moon Knight. We continue to have discussions when anything new comes out, whether it's Marvel or otherwise, pretty much any nerd thing that we like <laughs> we will have a discussion video on it and so we might not see us every week anymore because the series is ending but we will have more periodic ones every time that something good is coming out and outside of these reviews we every monday we put out a theory video so if you have any interest in those those do come out every week definitely and don't and forget don't forget subscribe, like, give us a thumbs up. There's a bell icon for notifications. Make sure you get those. So you'll, that way you'll know next time we have a discussion video up, which I mean, well, the next one will be to the next day. Tomorrow, tomorrow. we got Doctor Strange yeah. in the Multiverse of Madness coming out. And I'm sure we're gonna have a lot to discuss on that. So make sure you subscribe so you see that coming.
Yeah. And thanks for watching. Thank you.